to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. How's your PlayStation 5, Andy? <laughs> oh, yeah, congrats on that. <laughs> I uh, I won one last night. <laughs> yes. What's the serenity prayer? <laughs> what is it? Accept the things we cannot change. <sighs> Something like that. Welcome into the show, Tuesday, December fifteenth. I am I am all of us. You're here. I am some of us. You're, look, you're pushing through. It's about the journey. Heart of a champion. It's not about the destination. Do we have any other cliches I can lean on? I already did the emotional bargaining of trying to give my PS5 away <laughs> last night. <laughs> trying to buy the karma. <laughs> well, it was fabulous, though. I will say that. The amount of people. I, I was trending on Twitter. Go Andy was trending on Twitter. It was very fun. Um, for, for those of you that don't know what. Thank you. The tweet was, Andy decided before the game, remember he needed fewer than uh, 19 and a half points from Lamar Jackson. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it didn't work out. Um, but he said, if that have root for me, Fuklin, if that happens, I'm going to give away my unboxed PS5 yeah. with an extra controller to someone here. Yeah. Just as a, because then, you know. Win-win. It win-win, right? Aren't you super happy? It also means I would pay approximately $600 to beat Mike. <laughs> I think that that's part of the equation. Um, but I might give it away anyway. Oh. We'll see. We'll see. People were pretty cool last night, and uh, it made the game really fun. Obviously, Lamar Jackson had a huge game, and there was just nothing I could do about it. And I've seen the tweets coming in. Some people, you're moving on. You're You're into the second round. Some people... Look, you're you're in the same boat. You lose. Mike and I, one of us was going to lose. <laughs> We're head to head, yeah. and that's the game. And only one person wins every year. And you just have to accept the the reality of of your situation. And we're a year round show, so we'll be talking fantasy all the way through. You know, even if Mike comes out on top at the end of this year, well, I think the season we, will end. We can all agree now that we're rooting for me. Oh, one hundred percent. In the league Thank of you, record, yes. I am rooting for you. I want you know the Foot Clan to bring it home. Granted, everyone that pretty much is in our league is part of the Foot Clan. So, uh, but I, I'm, I'm rooting I'm for you. No way. No. <laughs> no goodness, no. Don't you want to <laughs> lose to the champ? No, 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 no. Because there are bigger things at play in that league. Like, I don't know. Mike and I are both two-time champs. And uh, I don't want him to have three. That's fair. So, That's fair. Anyways, welcome in. We've got waivers today, news to talk about. Also, we are becoming a dynasty show um, because our dynasty teams are st are in the playoffs. <laughs> well, mine is. Mine is in the other dynasty. Yeah. League. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're good. Yeah. Backup league. It's not a back. No, that league is fantastic. That's the most important league to me. Oh my gosh. Uh, streaming quarterback options to uh, on today's show as well. Probably less important than other weeks. If you're sure. if you're here, you're probably going. You probably have somebody to start. You might, but there is there is a very big pickup at quarterback. Yes, yes. So uh, we'll see. Yes, we'll see what happens. Fantasy uh, semifinals for a lot of leagues. YouTube.com/slash the fantasy footballers. If you want to follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, I'm at Andy Holloway, Jason at Jason FFL, Mike at FF Hitman. And the community, about 18,000, 19,000 strong over at jointhefoot.com. And it's been a fun ride this year. And for many of you, it's going to continue. We'll have the Foot Clan title shirts up for this year very soon. Mm. And, you know, you can get your you can get your one year's worth of bragging set up. I can't wait to get mine. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> How are you rooting for him? I'm rooting for the show. You have yes. a, I'm rooting for the fantasy footballers. That's you've never crazy root, you've, you've never me. rooted for me once. I've, I'm usually in it. I'm not rooting for you <laughs> against me. But when I'm out, you two are my horses. 47 to 42, the Ravens beat the Browns last night. Holy crap, this game. That was this game. This game was 
a, a, a picture of your guys' game. Because this was excellent, almost 90 points scored. In our league of record, uh, the high score of the week is usually about 150, and they dominated. They had a, an amazing week. Uh, sometimes it's 130, you know, if it's a down week. Andy scored 145 points and lost to Mike's 106. That was the Ravens-Browns. The Browns put up 42, and they lost the game. Kareem Hunt took it to 100. Yes, he did. Led the team in receiving 6 for 77. Nick Chubb. He Pretty good at football. Also, <laughs> I love Michael Keaton. He's fantastic. <laughs> Lamar Jackson, 163 passing yards, two touchdowns on the ground, one through the air. This was his best performance of the year. Is that right, fantasy wise? Uh, I I can verify. Ironically, that week one, I think he put up around 35 points against the Browns, and uh, here we are again. I think it was his best performance of the year. 124 I, rushing yards is is going to do that. In at least in our scoring format, yes, it was his best game. And uh, Mark, I, which means I just for the record, just throwing it out there, believe I received Miles Sanders' best game of the year, Lamar Jackson's yes. best game of the yes. year, T.Y. Hilton's best game of the year. Yes, that's, that's also, also true. That's also yeah, true. That's yeah, that's also true. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Mark Andrews, five for seventy-eight. Nice to see him back in there. And then Hollywood Brown always looks. Real bad, and then the last three weeks ends up in the end zone. Yeah, which is that part's good. That part is good. You uh, you riding the riding the lightning? <laughs> I don't think with, so. With Hollywood, two catches. You, you just you just can't. I mean, Lamar Jackson had his best game of the season. He threw for 163 yards. So when you're a wide receiver, that <laughs> that matters. 78 to Mark Andrews, who he'd prefer to throw to. Oh yeah, bigger. Um, uh, anything else from this game? Baker played well. The I mean, the Browns are legitimate. They're they're a real football team. They are, and they, they had a chance to make their stamp on this division. Well, they yeah, I mean they were they looked like they were going to win, and then the then Lamar Jackson came back because if you didn't watch the game, oh, man. Lamar Jackson ran off the field with cramps. Oh yeah, got, with, a, got an IV with with cramps and uh. I've been, I have, I've been I have, there, Lamar. I have also had poop cramps in my life. I have... Uh... <laughs> Lamar Lamar took a dump on Andy's team for sure. <laughs> Why? Well, oh, my gosh. Could you stop that? Uh, Regardless of the realities of why he went to the locker room, which he's, he's adamantly denied that he had to take a dump ski, it is something that I will accept happened it, on this show because it makes it yes. more fun and, and look and our show is not above that level of humor there is no shame i have had to stop this show mid podcast with the lamar jackson situation <laughs> i had there have been like, a few poop cats yeah, like time out <laughs> and then just run and the best like his teammate robert griffin is tweeting memes about lamar jackson and to take a poop it's okay he did come back out with a bandage, he came out a bandage on his iv <laughs> But it is possible that you can have a bad enough time in the bathroom. You might need an IV. Yeah. <laughs> these are mutually exclusive right. events. These, he could have needed I mean, to do both. You can watch him waddle out of that locker room and know something's up. Yeah. And then as soon as he was back on the field, that man, he would. He, he like, Loose as a goose. Yes. That's, yeah. Thank you. I yeah, couldn't yeah. find he, the appropriate He term. took care of uh, business <laughs> and the memes. The narratives, uh, it's fun. It, this is yes. why fantasy is fun. Mm -hmm. And we had, uh, I really wanted to give my PS5 away. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so we'll see. Well, I might do that anyways. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Even though I knew in my heart I had no chance, I do feel like I had an army of people rooting for me. You definitely did. And more importantly, Rooting a for high a percentage of those people insulting the fantasy hitman. They were doing that. Yeah, some were. Uh, there was a lot of go Andy, <laughs> but there was also some beat that man down. <laughs> so I felt good because I knew I, had, I knew I was going to lose. All right, Kyle Shanahan, Debo Samuel's going to be out a while. He's irrelevant for fantasy rest of the season. This stinks. Yeah. This is unfortunate. And uh, now you're a boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's he's broken. Yeah, uh, Raheem Mostert. MRI on uh, on Monday on his ankle. You know, we picked the wrong team to identify with being extremely <laughs> strong. I mean, Kittle, Tough. 
yeah, it's strong and tough. Like the medical staff. I mean, Kittle and Garoppolo and Mostert and Debo and they've been hit very Bosa hard. and ever, ever, yeah. I mean, J Jeff Wilson, great pickup right now. He's been injured. Tevin Coleman, ev literally, if you've been injured, if you're a 49er. But Jeff Wilson's going to get a lot of work. Tevin Coleman's probably an ad. He could get some work. It's it's been a rotating running back core all year long, and you've never been able to count on one player. So Matthew Stafford status in doubt for week 15 with the rib injury. That's a shame. He, he, he missed the end of last year, too. Such yeah. a good matchup. I mean, I would love to play Stafford against Jacksonville if he was healthy. What about against the, the Titans? Titans so. or, uh, that is just what as I, good. That is actually what I meant. But the Titans defense, because here's the thing. Jacksonville is a worse defense, but they don't keep up. Their, their offense is equally bad. And the Titans, their offense will score. And their defense stinks. They called the Titans the, the Jaguars of the clouds. <laughs> so the Cla Jaguars. I know what you meant. Hope they can get up there. They're cloud cats? I don't know what they are. <laughs> um, what are what's a Titan? Where does the Titan live? On the Earth? A Titan is is uh it's before the Greek gods. Right. The Titan they were gigantic. See, that's why I made the tie There's into one... the Greek gods and I pictured them in the clouds. Uh, okay. You see, that's where yeah. I was going. Like but okay. the Titans are just are they big? Yes, they're, they're super big. There's one holding up the earth right so now. So the, where their heads their heads would be up in the Yeah, does that news to you, what? Jason? Yes. Up in the clouds? Yeah. Maybe? All right. Well, I mean, yeah, they lived up on a mountain. Uh they, and they fight with Travis Kelsey. Well, yeah, Travis. That's where Travis that's Kelsey Zeus. lives. He lives yes. up there. All right, we know our history. <laughs> Gardner Minshew is going to start. Jalen Hurts is going to start. Yep, one of those things is important. <laughs> one of those is important. I will say though, to the Stafford point that you made, like, you know, injuries, issues, like my dynasty team, bunch of injuries and and players missing. I was looking forward to a Marvin Jones start against the Titans. But if it's Chase Daniel, yeah, I mean, yeah. I I have to do it anyways. <laughs> so we'll but see. it's not nearly as exciting. No, because they're throwing the football and Stafford's playing well. That being said, Stafford, if he can play, he will still want to play, even if there's nothing on the line. Alex Smith, calf injury, expects to be able to play. The team is optimistic. All right. I mean, you're not going to be starting Alex Smith in any situation. So it's, or Terry McLaurin. This is more of a which that sucks. Yes, that that does that stinks. The the really the Washington football team as a whole. You got McKissick, who I think takes a step down without Alex Smith, and you have to worry that you're only going to get at best a half a game from Alex Smith. Um, so yeah, it just downgrades the whole football team. Yeah, I would probably still feel okay with McKissick. Those are high probability passes, the two to four yard range. Yeah, I just like that. I feel like Alex Smith throws them all yeah. the time. I don't know if Haskins would or not. Mike Gesicki's undergoing more tests for mm. his shoulder injury. This is a big deal uh, for your fantasy team. Gesicki's been reliable, but you're probably going to have to find somebody else. Yeah, from what I heard, I, I don't think Gesicki is even in the realm of being startable this week or playable. I don't, I don't think he's on the field. David Johnson is supposed to be back from injured uh, or from the COVID list this week. According to head coach Romeo Cornell, Brandon Cooks is expected to return against the Colts. John Brown expected to return to practice. That To me, that feels more like a potential confidence reduction for Beasley than it does a – you're not going to probably roll John Brown out in week one when he returns, will you? No, no, no and you're right. When John Brown is back, the, the Beasley PPR bump will go away, but – if if you're playing the stallion, Josh Allen, you are really hoping John Brown gets back on the field. Ronald Jones may have fractured his pinky in Sunday's win. Really? Shouldn't affect his ability to carry the ball. Or catch it. Yeah, because he never had that ability. <laughs> it could only enhance. Right. This could oh, be more of a rookie of the year, of the year style Super thing. Super strong pinky. <laughs> well, it lets him, you know. It's like when you lose one of your senses. If you lose right. your pinky, the other four fingers, oh, they, they step become up, stronger. They step up, yeah. It can't hurt, honestly. I like that it's may have fractured. We have the technology, right. Bruce. We we do. We can figure this out. We can go from may to yes. I might have broken my leg last night. That's true statement. <laughs> All right. Uh, sitting injury? I, I Sure. <laughs> maybe it was while sitting. It might uh, be my foot. I mean, if you just put may in front of or might, it's like you can say whatever <laughs> you want. Christian McCaffrey. I said no offense. Yeah. <laughs> Christian McCaffrey may play again in 2020. Matt Rule says he plans on him playing again. But talk about a high stakes gamble. 
Will he be back this week? Oh, I don't think he'll be back this we week. Have, we have uh, more news. Do we have breaking news? Sure. Breaking news. Ronald Jones having surgery on broken finger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's confirmed. So we do have the technology. <laughs> I'm impressed. The timing of that sleeper alert. Yeah, that was that was spectacular. Um, okay, well uh, we'll monitor that. I uh, prior to the surgery, they didn't think it would affect him. Obviously, Godwin went through a similar thing and played. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. That's pretty big deal. Ronald is. Jones is kind of important to fantasy teams right now, mm -hmm. which is not something that some many people thought we'd say or wanted to. Do you think Christian McCaffrey plays this week? I do not. I do not. I I I, I do think that. They want to get him back out to finish the year, even though they're playing for nothing. I think they want to have that experience. He wants to do it. But, I mean, if you've got an injury uh, that is keeping you out, you have to wait till it's over. And, and usually the injury he has is more of a two-week timeline. All right, we've got waivers coming up. We do. And before that, Foot Clan, this episode of the Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Head & Shoulders, available at Walmart. Yes. This year, yes. we are doing a new segment. Every Thursday, we're picking our players who are going to take it up to 100. And we had a pretty delightful week. Kareem Hunt. That was not 100. That was... Yeah, I mean, it was at least 100. At, uh, that was like a 200. Yeah. A minimum. Like, Kareem Hunt was fantastic. Robbie Anderson... Took care of business with the absence of DJ Moore for the Carolina Panthers. He was a hit. DJ Chark, not so much a hit. You know, <laughs> I, I replaced Marquise Brown, who had a bad game, but still took it up to 100 for fantasy when you get yeah. 50 and a touchdown. But uh, I would go with your guys' options. And so that 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 takes the the contest is staying very close between Andy and I. Yeah. We will, We're separating. We, well, we've separated from the dead weight of the show. <laughs> But this Thursday, we'll be doing it again. And I do mean wait. <laughs> I wasn't going there, but okay. Take your hair up to 100 with head and shoulders. Available at Walmart. Pick yours up today and check out this Thursday's episode to hear our up to 100 picks of the week. And Footland, we want to thank a new sponsor, Headspace. Look, life, life can be stressful under any normal circumstance, but in 2020... Goodness gracious! Talk about playoff week. Okay, yeah, yeah, this yes, week, this is week, well timed. Yeah, if you're if you're missing out on the fantasy playoffs and you just need to get your head in the right space, Headspace is your daily dose of mindfulness in the form of guided meditations in an easy to use app. Headspace is one of the only med meditation apps advancing the field of mindfulness and meditation through clinically validated research. So whatever the situation, Headspace really can help you feel better. Are you overwhelmed? Headspace has a three-minute SOS meditation for you. You need some help falling asleep? Headspace has winding down sessions that their members swear by. For parents, Headspace even has morning meditations you could do with the kids. Headspace's approach to mindfulness can reduce stress, improve sleep, boost focus, and increase your overall sense of well-being. I know this has been a stressful year even for me and, and meditation it's 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 important it's not it's not a bad it thing it's a good thing to get your head in the right space i fully endorse meditation it is it, it is actually very important it's backed by 25 published studies on the benefits 600,000 five star reviews and over 60 million downloads that make it easy to build life changing meditation practices you deserve to feel happier and headspace is meditation made simple go to headspace.com slash footballers that's headspace.com slash footballers for a free one month trial with access to headspace's full library of meditations for every situation it's the best deal offered right now headspace.com slash footballers today put me in coach i did i had to take a little space from our slack channel last night why? What happened? <sighs> <laughs> did I? Did I really? I, I said I wanted more suspense in our matchup, but I, did I really? I don't know. Well, more suspense is more hope shattered, right? Yes, I, I. I hope you were at least able to take solace in the you didn't. You didn't have to play any. If I had done this, yes, right. Because, I know what you're saying. Yep. Yeah, yep. Because you, I mean, we all made pivots on Sunday, and you. Well, not all of us. Well, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, the absence of a move is still a move. Yeah. <laughs> you don't. Yeah, you're not that guy. I'm not Jason. <laughs> I'm not the dead weight. 
You're not the one that's the fault. Your team did great. Yeah, yeah it, you lost. I would rather lose with a great performance than a, a loss saying. I screwed up. I should have put this guy in. I knew I should have put him in. I didn't. I would have won. I lost. It's my my loss is my fault. Your loss, Andy, is Mike's fault. And I apologize for, for nothing. nothing. Yeah. Brandon Ayuk, if he's out there, yeah. he's going to help you win oh your fantasy gosh, leagues. Let's is. start with wide receiver pickups. Brandon Ayuk, rostered in 69% of ESPN leagues, 78% in Yahoo. He's probably rostered. Probably. Same with T.Y. Hilton. But both of those players... Uh, T.Y. Houston. Sorry, T.Y. Houston this week. Thank you. Uh, taking on Houston, who, who... It's like a cheat code. Um, he really loves playing Houston. It's, and without Houston, he's been on fire the last three games. Mm -hmm. Only one of those was Houston. Uh, yeah, if, if he's available, you absolutely pick him up and play him. All of the gifts, the resurrection gifts that uh, come out... Of are the always, Undertaker. Of the Undertaker. They're yeah. always very funny. T.Y. Hilton in my dynasty league on my <laughs> roster felt like a wasted spot. Like, do you just let this player evaporate? And here he is for your fantasy playoffs, reminding you that he exists. It's unbelievable. It's crazy. All right, let's move beyond the probably rostered names, however, and try to find some value. If you're in a pickle, if you're dealing with injuries, if Debo Samuel was going to be locked and loaded for your fantasy playoffs and now he's gone... What are some names? Uh, Jason, Nelson Aguilar. That's the name that I wanted to bring Agreed. up. Nel Nelson Aguilar has, look, he's just been good. Uh, he's not a super reliable option. People from Philadelphia can tell you that. But he has uh, several games this year that have been good for fantasy. This last week, he had, you know, nine targets after 11 targets. He is involved in the offense, and he is always the guy looked to around the end zone. Um, seven touchdowns on the season already. You add all of that with a really good matchup against the Los Angeles Chargers, and I, I think he is someone that you could take from your waiver wire and put into your lineup in a pinch if you lost a Debo Samuel or someone like that, and you have a little bit of upside there. Yeah, I mean, for him to be the primary target and have the big playability, that's huge. Now, I'm going to ask a really important fantasy question because that's what we do here. Mm -hmm. If you had to choose, let's say, you, you know, the burning building situation, you got to toss your kid from the second story. Right. Ooh. It's Nelson Aguilar, it's Marquez Valdez Scantling, and it's Deontay Johnson. Who do you want? Who do you Ooh. want? <laughs> oh, Ooh. man. I'd include Ebron, but I know we're not picking him. No, so. goodness. I love my children. <laughs> uh, but but who, who who's catching your kid, man? Uh, I think Deontay's in his head. It's it's too important right now, so he, that's why he's missing. He, he's is, Tom, be, is Tomlin within the vicinity? Is Tomlin saying, catch that kid, catch uh, that kid? He doesn't need to be. He knows it's a kid. You have to catch this one. That's when Deontay doesn't. He's oh, out. so he doesn't. He's, he's out, out for me. I think oh. I'm going Mark West. The, uh, he, really? He makes, he makes the unexpected ones. He makes ones. the difficult catches. Yeah, but this would be considered a big play. No, but yeah, but he he drops like easy pass. Yeah, every, oh. every time I think... So try There's, to throw the kid a little bit. Yeah. A little bit oh, over his head. Little, little, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Go get him. <laughs> yeah, it's MVS. Wow. <laughs> okay. All right. Congratulations. Congrats, MVS. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's not the it's you not are the baby Aguilar. catcher for the fantasy footballers. Right. It, I mean, like last resort still. Like we're, we're going Hopkins before we're going MVS, right? <laughs> Larry, right? Larry's not down there. Larry Fitzgerald's You're not sure? available. Sure. All right, MVS. Uh, other options that are are worth looking at, you know, Curtis Samuel is going to be heavily involved and potentially not rostered. And if DJ Moore is not back again, it's going to be Curtis Samuel and Robbie Anderson. Uh, what Kiki you, QT. Yeah, I was going to say, what do you think about the Texans? The the Texans wide receivers, Kiki QT and Chad ha Hansen. They would both mm -bop, be. Mm -bop. Mm -bop. <laughs> uh, they would both be great pickups. In general, they're being hyper targeted. Mm -hmm. They've got a great quarterback. Indianapolis is tough, but that's the that's the matchup. That's the conundrum. Can you pick them up and start them against Indianapolis? Obviously, Chicago was a difficult matchup. Also, the Indianapolis matchup two weeks ago, where Chad Hansen was five for a hundo. Same one, same <laughs> one. Not not that I'm saying it's going to happen again. But and and Kiki also had a big game against the Colts. It's it's tough to choose between them because. Kiki had one touchdown, but he only had three targets in, in last week's game. 
He played fewer snaps than Hanson. Hanson has two more reliable target weeks in consecutive order. Like I feel like like Hanson's a better play. I would go Hanson over over QT. And and you had a uh, regardless of if uh, you're picking them up for this week, maybe you're looking ahead of uh, your your roster's secured for week 15, but you want to to look ahead for week 16 or you want to play some keep away. They play the Bengals in championship weekend. Houston does. So that's they they will be a much better play that week and you may want to make sure that your opponent does not have Hanson uh, available. Now, I guess this this all is under yeah. the presumption that Brandon Cooks is right. If not he, going to play, which yeah, I, if, if Cooks is back out there, do you still? I probably don't mess around with these, right? Yeah, and I I don't I don't it's think, too risky against Indianapolis to go second and third options. I agree, but I don't expect uh I I don't expect Cooks to be back out there. You but, don't, even though the team does. I th I think it's a I, I I just worry about his head, man. I I really do. I. You know, I know it wasn't reported it was as a, a head foot. injury. It's no, neck. I I know it's that neck. it's I, neck injury. I know it wasn't uh, neck hundred um, percent reported as a concussion or head injury. If it was, then he's got to go in protocol, and you don't see him again because of his history. So I just I'm I mean that's just okay. you know that's not anything that I have inside knowledge of. That's just the worry, I guess. Um, but I will say this, and we have done this at the studio this last week. It was incredible. Um, if you do roll with Chad Hansen. Every single time, yes, he catches the ball. You just hit it with a, mm -bop, and it's a lot of fun. It was a good time because Mike had thought about playing him. So every time yeah. it was a bit of a taunting. Well, it was great Mike. because it was Chad Hansen or Miles Sanders, and he felt like an idiot because Hansen kept getting targeted. Yeah, and we loved rubbing it in by going, mm -bop, and he'd hate it every time. Yeah, it was really great. Yeah, and then he won. All right, Lynn Bowden, a uh, Bowden, Lynn Bowden Bowdoin, Jr. Yeah. He is. He is a sneaky play this week. he is extremely interesting uh he's on the Miami Dolphins if you're not familiar with who he is and in a lot of leagues he is running back and wide receiver eligible he is not playing running back like he is playing the slot for Miami and nine targets seven for 82 last week led the team and they have nobody this week. they have no Devonte Parker is hurt I we're not expecting him to play Mike Gesicki is hurt we're not expecting him to play. Jakeem Grant hurt. In he is crazy sneaky. If you have a running back problem or even I, a wider a flex I'd, problem, I'd play him over the Houston options. Sure. Yeah, I get that. Now, here's a name that I I would play over the Houston options and over Lynn Bowden. It is Mister Disrespected. It's Tim Patrick, mm. who just keeps being good. I mean, every single week uh, when he has a quarterback in there, he's a solid, reliable option. I know it's Drew Locke. It's Mr. Irresponsible. Um, <laughs> Irresponsible throwing to disrespected. Yeah, and I think that's a really good combination. I, I, I just think Tim Patrick's a good wide receiver who's been getting utilization and getting it done for fantasy. It's, it's, I, I think you should be starting Tim Patrick. Do you Talk disagree? Would you rather have Bowden? Um, I think that... Bowden might provide more flexibility for your team as you make decisions this week with the the eligibility stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I will, I think they're both good good options. So I think I think you have the the top of the list: Ayuk and Hilton. If they're not available, you're moving into Aguilar, uh, Samuel, Patrick, and Bowden. Yeah, I and like then it. and then you can pivot to Hanson or QT if Cooks is out. Which right now the team is reporting he's going to be back. So uh, we'll see what happens. Running back wise, what's the headline here? What who are you looking for at running back? The running back headline to me isn't isn't available. Lynn Bowden. No, <laughs> no it, it, I mean it still says he's available in twenty five percent of Yahoo leagues and almost fifty percent of ESPN. But Cam Akers to me is is an absolute league winner. Um, he he made the transition. The other the other two backs were barely involved. And it's been better for the Rams. They've been better for it. Cam Akers has looked outstanding, obviously has fresh legs since he wasn't used the majority of the season. They drafted to be this. I mean, he he got the role that Todd Gurley had this last week, and he dominated in it. Um, so I, I don't think he's available because he had his breakout kind of the week sure. before last. But if he is, he would be my number one priority Period. I do want to update people on the ever-changing during the show live Ronald Jones situation. 
Did oh, it? thank you. He's undergoing the exact same procedure that Chris Godwin underwent. He's getting a pin put into his broken finger. Godwin missed a game with this. Oh, so if man. Ronald Jones misses this week, you could see a, a committee, Fournette, McCoy, the healthy scratch. Vaughn. Yeah, I, I imagine they'd turn right back to him. I, I do too. I'm saying that that is going to feel really sketchy. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are aware, but the Atlanta Falcons are unfathomably good this season against running backs. It makes no sense. They are one of the absolute best. So if you've got a broken fingered or, or missing <clears throat> Ronald Jones, along with a hodgepodge of you don't know who to start against a terrible matchup, um, maybe you just pivot. Maybe, maybe you just go Brady and assume he's going to throw the ball 45 times. Yeah, maybe. Uh, other running backs um, that, that are widely available, DeAndre Washington for the Dolphins. This is a, It's a desperation play. This is a volume play. He was the primary running back for the team until they – kind of had to go into catch-up mode, and then, then it turned into Patrick Laird because he's the pass catcher. He's the third down guy. But DeAndre Washington would see the goal line, and this is – I'm assuming that Salvin Ahmed is still going to be injured uh, heading into the weekend. And then the the most available guy and the, the biggest pickup to me is – My, my name, name is Jeff. My name is Jeff Wilson for the 49ers. In the the one opportunity we saw for him, where he was the starting guy, oh. he, he just crushed. And his matchup this week is so delightful. The Dallas Cowboys, like, are you kidding me? I imagine he'll be in your lineup this week. He's already in there. Yeah, yeah. Would you, you you picked him up last week just in case? Yes. Let's say the news comes out tonight from Raheem Mostert's MRI. It's 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 a bad news. You he guarantee he's not playing next week, and both Cam Akers and Jeff Wilson are available. I would take Cam Akers. Okay, because th th those two 29 guys twenty nine carries. Yeah, right, it, it, the New York Jets and then the Seattle Seahawks to close the season for Akers. That's where I would go. But all right, but yeah. after that, after that is Jeff Wilson. Uh, I would say, and this is the time of year. We we probably don't need to say this. But this is the time of year where spend it all. Spend everything right. you've – there's no point. You don't – if you end the season with leftover fab money or a high waiver priority, you don't get anything for that. Get the best players now, and Wilson and, and uh, Akers are worth spending up for. And, out, and just a quick note, I don't want to like focus on it, but if you aren't in, in a deep league – at this point, I would stash Travion Williams from the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm not playing him against the Pittsburgh Steelers, but they did turn to him this past week, the, the Bengals did, and if it turns out he's the guy, he gets to play Houston in the final week. Tight ends, if you're in a Gasicki, icky Gasicki situation. Nice. Uh, where are you looking in week 15? Uh, I mean, the, the safest target option. To me, it's Cole Komet. I was gonna say Logan Thomas, but if it's if it's uh, if it's not Alex Smith, then I don't think I want to play no, Logan Cole, Thomas. No, Cole Komet's been really, really good lately in terms of snap counts, target share going up. I, I'm interested. Seven targets. Okay, I'm interested uh, in the other side of the field, yeah. which is Irv Smith Jr. Big Irv. If Kyle Rudolph is gone. I mean, Andy, I, yeah, I know the no, Aikens. No, that's fine. The Jordan Aikens start last week was based on the Chicago matchup. Oh my gosh, did we talk about that drop? No. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness! Look, uh, Andy, I've got to give it up to you. I know, I know he had a bad game, and it was, you know, it was like shame on you. But the call was right. That is a true process over results. I have never in all my thirty-eight years of being able to watch football, I have never seen a drop like what he did. He he was Jordan Akins was in the corner of the end zone and there was not an a defender within ten yards of him. He was as open as I've ever seen a player. The ball comes lobbed on and this isn't thrown on a line. This is just right at you. His arms are open, wide open, and he's already celebrating his Jordan Akins touchdown. Somehow. I was literally up off the chair because I, I live for a U Foot clan and this pick was important to me. He already had three catches. This was gonna be the the oh, put him over the top. point for and, Jordan Akins. And as he stands there, arms out, the ball 
floats and hits him in his left bicep on the side of him. He doesn't even put his arms where the ball was. I've never seen anything like this it. I don't was, know if he was. It was the sun. It was the sun. Yeah. Yeah. He was the come on man at, on the show on Monday Night Football oh, last he? night. They put some pretend sunglasses on him. Oh, man. People were tweeting he needs the shady rays. I mean, I couldn't believe it because I was jumping up for the Foot Clan. That's how, that's how long and easy the process of this play was. You're like, oh, he's open. He's I had time to celebrate on the pass. <laughs> yes. And when he just blatantly <laughs> dropped it, it was unbelievable. So, anyways... But the point is, Honestly, they give up a lot of touchdowns. Yeah. Chicago does yes, to the tight do. end position. Irv Smith. They has tried. Been they tried real hard to give one up there. Yeah. So I, I think if I was to pick someone up and play him off of waivers this year week, uh, it would it would be Big Irv. All right. Let's just live all the pain, live all those memories this week. Defenses important this week. Uh, Buffalo takes on Denver. The Drew Locke experience. Yeah. Look, I'm, he was great last week. Yeah, that's that's fine. Ir, ir, irresponsible people, they, it's, they, it's, they get things right every once in a while. Right. <laughs> I, w I, would, uh, I would look at the Cleveland Browns. I realize they just gave up a billion points to the Ravens, but the, the New York Giants offense has oh. been bad. A hobbled Daniel Jones that Agreed. can't – I mean, we, we saw Hassan Reddick this week get five sacks himself on Daniel Jones – did you not know that, Andy? Five? Five sacks. Yeah, set the, the franchise record um, by he himself. He just made so much money. <laughs> yeah. So I, I do think that uh, Cleveland against the Giants is a good play this I week. agree. Uh, Seattle against Washington is a, a home run. Washington's got nothing. That, that was the one I was going to throw out. We, we've been preparing for a month now to at least, I mean, I have, to play Arizona against the Philadelphia Eagles because – no. That was a target matchup with Carson Wentz, and now in our league of record, I'm like, ah, oh, crap. I think it's I, too risky. I have to oh, pivot. I'm not. Arizona sure. is not a great defense. What and about what about the 49ers against Dallas? Yeah, I'd be willing to 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 do that over the Arizona one. But I just wanted to echo that the Seattle against Washington. That's very intriguing. They've they've been a lot better, and if it is Dwayne Haskins, uh, you just absolutely. keep you keep rolling them. I mean, we talked about this a month ago, and you've been riding Seattle through this stretch of the NFC East. So you just keep it up. If you want to not pay attention to this part of the show next week, then set yourself up for week 16. Set mm -hmm. yourself up for the title game. If Chicago's sitting out there, they take on Jacksonville. The Chargers are playing the aforementioned irresponsible Drew Locke-led Denver Broncos. That's right. Houston will be playing some semblance of quarterback in, against Cincinnati. I mean, that's a tough defense to trust. But Washington takes on Carolina. Washington's yeah, I mean, gonna, defense has been outstanding. I would play Washington about just about in any matchup. If if you have them, they're in. You're gonna play them against Seattle? This I said, week? I said just about. Oh. <laughs> but if they're dropped, <laughs> pick them up. Yeah, all right, let's move on. Full stream ahead. I wish I had Brooks's wealth to fall back on when Things go sideways. You know what I mean? If I've learned anything from DuckTales, is that money is very soft and swimmable. Right. It's yeah, you can just, just a relaxing. Dive right in and it gets out of dip. your way. Uh, I, I feel like in your anger, you could just really destroy some Fabergé eggs. Um, that would have a good time doing that. Uh, yeah, and if you know you can just replenish your Fabergé egg collection with all of your wealth. Well, and you know what he would have done with the PlayStation 5? He just would have smashed it. I thought about it. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been the greatest backfire for I was going to give this to you, Foot Clan, but instead I'm throwing it off my roof. I'm going to drop it out of my private plane. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Full stream ahead again. Quarterback, streamers. Worth mentioning because we had the conversation on Monday, 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 and talking through the studs. There were players like Tua. There were players like Drew Locke. There, there were some outliers. And you could be in a situation where you're uncomfortable with your quarterback position. And if you are, there are options. Now, Mike Mike has the headline. We need to put them in order, I think, this week. Yeah, I agree. Uh, rather than just each present one. And Mike's got the big one because so, he's the cheat code at the quarterback position. Yes, it is, it is Jalen Hurts. The matchup is good against the Arizona Cardinals. They're not a good defense. 
and 100 rushing yards against the New Orleans Saints. Like it, he was he was very judicious and picked his spots to run like a vet. They, this was not oh crap, I'm out of control scrambling and and he breaks a big play. Like he was picking his spots. He looked okay-ish as a, as a passer, but again, that was against the Saints. The Arizona defense is not the New Orleans matchup. So I think that Jalen Hurts should be played as a top 12 quarterback this week. I agree. Yeah, and, I, and he gets the Dallas Cowboys in championship week. And I got to I got to bring up P River against the Texans yes, because TY Hilton does he's not going to throw to himself and if he's going to have the kind of games he's having and the way that Philip Rivers is playing, I see the grimace on your face, Jason. I almost went Philip Rivers. I literally almost made well, him I should have let you do that. Week. Um he's a phenomenal start this week. <laughs> <laughs> he is. I mean, look, all of my personal issues uh, with P. River and what he has done to to my teams. Um, I I would play him if I had him. I, and you, you got to, you know, we say you got to stay water. Yes. Uh, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Stay all urine. Right. Stay urine. Um, <laughs> urine in for fantasy yeah. points. Stay Ur urine in for, for fantasy points. Um. <laughs> No, it's a great. It's a, he's a great play this week. Good uh, to see we got poop and pee into the show today. Oh, very not high a, brow. Not a show without just some good old number two jokes. Um, all right, uh, my stream of the week is Jared Goff. <laughs> I'm just noticing in the studio right now. Can we go to the main camera? Jason is not in the ideal position with Lamar Jackson directly, <laughs> directly above his head. Like if you if you're watching on YouTube, like there's a chance like Jason. Oh no. Oh, Al Borland, what are you doing? <laughs> All right, uh, Jason. Jason, you have a streaming quarterback situation. You want to? Uh, do you want to illuminate? Sure. Uh, Jared Goff. Uh, who? <clears throat> look, Jared Goff has big games and bad games. Uh, he's not a reliable week in and week out starter. Oh, no, Jared Goff. But Jared Goff should have a great game this week. I, I know we talked up Cam Akers. Uh, I think he's going to be uh, a really good option. You look at the Jets, you go, oh, they stink, and and he should be fine. But it's, it is worth noting over the last eight weeks, the Jets are actually top six against running back. Now, part of that is because they're just so dang easy to throw on that you get all your fantasy points that way. Over the last eight weeks, that same stretch, they are number one uh, as far as the best matchup against quarterbacks. They've given up a top ten Fantasy finish for a quarterback in seven straight weeks. So I, I think Jared Goff's someone you can uh, throw out as a good streaming option. All right, a reminder, mailbag on tomorrow's show. Be on the lookout for some social posts at the FF Ballers on Twitter, or you can submit your questions to the website at any time, thefantasyfootballers.com. Let's do a little mailbag. Mailbag. Bang, ooh, bang, ooh. Playoff edition. Is Brooks in the Trace nice. Comma Club? Oh, of think? course. Trace? Trace? Yeah. Quattro. Quattro? Yeah. Quad comma? Yes. He's wow. got his own tequila. All right. Uh, Jay in New Jersey. Uh, hey, guys. This will be belated, but congratulations on 1,000 episodes. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Uh, man, I, I, I remember that 1,000th episode. That was back before I lost to Mike. It was great. Need a running back in a flex for week 15. Miles Sanders, Cam Akers, Deontay Johnson. Oh, please. Please, you don't play a player that can get benched for dropping a pass over Miles Sanders and Cam Akers. Yeah, that one's easy. Richard in Houston, who do I start for Week 15 playoffs? Justin Herbert or Ben Roethlisberger? PPR League. This is uh, Justin Herbert. It's it's slowed down for Justin Herbert. That as as true. it had to. Otherwise, he would break football. Yes, it slowed down, but he is the. Thursday night matchup against the Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah, I mean, he's a better option. Yeah. Now, what about – how are you feeling as a Keenan Allen manager? Because seeing him go out with the hamstring, it came back on the field. Yeah, he came – but, I mean, he missed a lot of really important time at the end of the game. I know that the Chargers ended up, you know, pulling it out. They got the W. But it was, like, where is Keenan Allen? And on top of that – no one's talking about it. Like Keenan Allen had Well, because he's still been fine and great and playing a lot. But he missed a bunch of time at at the clutch point of the game 
And what's going on with Keenan Allen? Is he okay? I think so. I He better be. He's turned into a bit of an Iron Man, believe it or not. Yeah, uh, it's ironic. Yeah. It, it's kind of like how Frank Gore came into his career as this super injury prone yeah. guy. You can never rely on Frank Gore. Now he's And then became indestructible. Same thing happened with uh, Matt, Stafford Matt, for a while. Oh, Matt same, Forte, Matt Forte. Too. Yeah. yeah. Patrick in Tampa. Uh, I had James Conner on my IR spot last week, but this week I chose not to move him off IR for the extra roster spot. When this happens, sleeper locks your lineup, but I don't care because I had the buy. Mm. Uh, the commission is forcing me to drop a player Sunday, and when I refused, uh, he did it for me. Oof. Am I cheating or using the settings to my advantage? You are not cheating. You are you you are playing the game. It, I can't st look. I'm Type A. You guys have made the point. Capital Type what? A. What you? But, but you know, how am I as a commissioner? You're you're laissez faire. Do I? This is a commit. This is this this guy is the head of his HOA. There's no yes, question yeah. about it. Yes. Because you don't need to micromanage another team that is playing within the constraints of the platform. This is my message to you, type double capital A <laughs> commissioners out there. If you're playing the game the way everyone else in the league is allowed to play the game, back off and stop trying to be power hungry. Yes. That's the message. Yeah, you're you're Andy. This, this commissioner is Aaron. This commissioner certainly double a. <laughs> starts with the double A. A, uh, a Ron. I mean, Al Borland is in a league. Is it? Do I have permission to bring this to the light? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> you know, in a league that has some veto control issues. You know, insane ones. Insane ones where he's had trades that are completely fair, vetoed, and people saying, "You trade too much or don't make so many trade offers. We don't like the trades you do." Ridiculous. Do you Absurd. know how many trades have seemed lopsided in leagues? And then a week or two later, it's the complete other side, and they end up lopsided on that advantage. You can't see the future, and you don't know. Let a, a manager have the freedom to make a mistake or be a genius that you – don't presume as a commissioner you know everything. I agree. Let people play the game. This commissioner dropped a, a player for you? That is insane. I You're mean, right. that, that's that's overstepping your boundaries, and the truth is – the platform allows that. The rules of the IR spot is that once an ineligible player is in your IR, you're not going to be able to make other transactions until you fix that position. Right. He didn't need to. He didn't break a single rule. I, I would have done the same thing. I would encourage Foot Clan members to do the same thing. Capitalize, maximize your roster under the platform's rules. It's different if there is a platform bug that is being exploited. Uh, exploited. Uh, when like when ESPN changed Taysom Hill from a quarterback or or from a tight, a end. tight end to a quarterback, and if you left him in, th th they couldn't put him out. That's a bug. That's that's not how it's supposed to work. This is how the IR position is designed. To and work. you are paying the price. You can't move your lineup yep. if you if you keep them in the IR spot. So you're making a strategic decision. Uh, anyways. We're done. <laughs> That's how we feel about that. Yes. Uh, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the podcast. Uh, please, if you haven't, head over to pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. You'll get a $10 credit. It, it costs you nothing to sign up, and you get the opportunity to browse hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. Keenan Allen, Jersey, 84 bucks yesterday. It costs you negative $10. Right. If you use the code BALLERS. Yeah, negative $10. Wow, that's a good deal, man. A, and and you just get the Browns. And if you don't want to buy anything, don't. But they got cool stuff, so you yep. might want to. And then you get $10 off. You're you're going to want to. <laughs> that was a very high well, voice. I went real <laughs> high. <laughs> and, <laughs> I had to keep I had more to say, but the voice was already at a level that <laughs> Give it everything I, you got. I had to keep going. All right. We made it through another episode of the show. Please join us tomorrow and thank you so much for supporting the show, subscribing, listening, reviewing. We appreciate it. And uh Talk to you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.